Greetings, people, and welcome to the final episode of the Unlimited Saga Tutorials. We've learned basically all we need to know about how the game works in the previous episodes. Now, we learn how to break the game. In this episode, I'll go over cash and magic tablet farming tricks, as well as using things such as safe state abuse to get tablets and even panels. So, side quests have something called turn limit, meaning you only get a certain, certain number of turns to do the adventure before having to return into town. Although it seems like an annoyance at first, once you get the hang of it, you could really, really abuse this fact. Here it is broken down, so when you run out of turns, you get kicked out of the town with the panel growth or HP growth. However, you retain any money, items, magic or skills you learn during this quest. In this way, you can theoretically infinitely farm for money, items and skills. So you grab treasure or fight enemies until you spark newer skills, and then you run out of turns and get kicked back into town. So there are even certain quests such as Tribal Chief's Trial or Veth Tome uh, and uh, Healer's Hills in Chapa, uh, where you could actually exit early so you save even more time. However, the two other factors that prevent us from doing this of course are durability and monster rank. As far as durability is concerned, shops don't restock after you fail a quest so you run into danger of running out of items to buy or forge with. As far as monsters, monsters will still get stronger even if you don't get panels or HP, and you can see how that could be really, really problematic like early up in game. So in summary, the only real use of this type of farming is either very, very early cash farming, or learning skills and magic. In fact, for learning skills, there's one particularly great place to do so. The giant running around in the Hall of Hades at the Knight's Mausoleum quest in Vaftom is perhaps the best place in game to farm for skills. Firstly, he has among the highest monster rank in the game, and secondly, he has an exploit where if you cast Missile Guard, 90% of his attacks deal no HP damage. You can see it on this episode that I'm going to link to, that this is the exploit I use in Laura's quest quite a lot. So you simply cast Missile Guard and combo into him until his sk unit skills spark. It's that simple. One other thing that carries over after failing quests are magic tablets. How this works is that once you get a magic tablet, it stays with you until your next panel selection, even if you run out of turns or exit a quest. Therefore, if you want to farm for magic tablets, one way to go is to go into a quest with a magic tablet in it, grab it, fail or exit, and then finish a different quest to check if it's a tablet you want. This is a great way if you want lower level magic tablets. For higher level ones, mimics are the way to go. Start a side quest with treasure chest inside it. Use sharp eye until you find a chest with a mimic trap. Then fight one of them for the chance to get a magic tablet. Once you do get one, this is important, fail the quest, save on a different slot, then you finish a different quest to check on what tablet you received. If you like what you got, continue with a new save and get up to three tablets before you finish a quest. If you don't like what you got, reload the old save and start again. So be warned though that even though this nets you a great chance of getting a high level magic tablet, it is very time consuming and it does not advance any real game time. So, you know, it's maybe as a pet peeve for me as an RG, R, RGP, <laughs> RPG player, uh, but you don't get to see how long you spent on the game to be able to, to reap its rewards. And it's something of a, yeah, you know what I mean. The best way to farm for cash, at least in this game, is through forging. No, 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 not forgery, but the forging of Platinum and Damascus. Platinum is created by combining silver and any bestial item with a 20% success rate. So silver costs about 4,000 kroner on average, while bestial items cost about 2,000 kroner. Added with the cost of several units of low-costing forging materials like serpentine and marcasite, a fully unlocked Platinum item at full durability will net you 50,000 kroner each. Of course, you could use 
this guy has to get more raw materials for forging even more platinum items. That's the best way to farm for cash in this game. While this method can also be used with Damascus, unless you have a full stock of Damascus on all your characters, I'd use platinum. Yeah. Curious, beware. Beyond this point lies the darker side of gaming. Save states. While the current method of playing the game and abusing the game already contains a fair amount of soft resets and luck manipulation, save states go to a whole new level. It involves copying system files between two memory cards, so there's always a risk of damaging data. Not to mention doing things that the game was not designed to do. And that is borderline cheating. Still, We'll leave the mall discussions elsewhere. The information is here for you to use. If you do so wish, be warned that I'm not liable for any broken memory cards, game saves, etc. And you do this at your own risk. Onward! Simply put, you stop one step before doing the desired action in the game. Then quit the game using the menu. This will create a quick save on the system file. Next, you reset the console. Then, copy the system file onto a second memory card. This will be your backup. When you boot the game up, you get the option to continue where you left off, but the game will erase the quick save data automatically. If things go your way, great, but more likely than not, it won't. What you do is then you soft reset the console again, copy the backup system file over the original, and voila, the continue option returns. This is as close to a safe state of use as this game can get without manipulating things from external sources such as using emulators. But although I think the BIOS would count as like an external source, but yeah. One use of this, of course, is to get the panels you want. It's a simple process, really. You quick save before you end the quest, then reload the quick save until you get the panels you want. This is very useful for farming very rare panels such as Magic Blender and Iron Body. <laughs> but what we want is there are to set up around 12 or so panels that are decided for you before the end of the quest, depending on the actions you did, of course. So if you don't get one in like a dozen or so tries, you might as well cut your losses and move on. Well, the more interesting use for this would, of course, be the farming of magic tablets. So, adding to our usual method, we can eliminate the repeated disappointments by saving state before using sharp eye, then saving state after using sharp eye. So, you save state before using sharp eye so you can manipulate what type of traps are on the chest. Naturally, we're looking for mimic traps and we're trying to avoid looking for other traps. Then, once you get all the traps you want, you can save state after, so you can simply just repeatedly fight the mimic for the tablet. Then you finish as before, fail the quest, save on the slot, and finish a different quest to check on the panels. Only this time, if you don't like what you got, all you need to do then is reload the quick save, rather than the old full save. What actually makes this method really appealing to use is that it cuts the amount of chests you need to explore. Uh, simply get to the chest you want, then you save, and then you don't need to explore for any more chests after that. Not to mention the amount of time you waste and the amount of battles you have to do to travel to the chest in the first place. In short, it turns what usually would take days, maybe even weeks if your luck is not, you know, depending on your luck. Two matters is something you could do in a few hours. And the game doesn't know the difference either way. So now folks, you've known all you need to know about the game to be able to play it. But how does it all fit together? Well, as my final bit of advice, here's my usual method of tackling the adventures. So first, I usually aim to follow the main quest for as long as possible. Your first priority is to unlock as many characters as you can, so, you know, you can farm for as many panels as you can at once. Yeah. In the meantime, 
you visit every inn after every quest to find silver, bestial items, you know, that's carnelian, topaz, opal, ravenite, lazuli, you know, all the jewelry, and good cheap repairing items such as serpentine and marcasite. Don't forget to keep out for weight items too, such as uh, lead and feather, since they are handy for creating like heavy or light weapons. And lastly, don't forget Moloch, since it's cheap and becomes quite rare later. And this is something you'll be doing all game, regardless of where you are in game, because it's the best way to farm for cash and repair items. Your first destination in game is usually always the closest town with a blacksmith. That's either Wanda, Longshank, Vaftom, or Garriera. Most heroes will begin at one, but usually it's just a few towns away. Uh, there, you can begin forging your weapons as well as platinum to make money, which is, you know, money's everything, it's important. Once you get all the characters you want to use, it's a good time to start grinding your characters. Get the Mascus weapons and accessories and farm for panels, tablets, and skills. Once you get all those things, prep your army to fight the final boss. Each has its specific status ailment, so check Myth's FAQ so you remember. You're ready to tackle the final boss once your party members are, you know, around 400 HP. And that's it, folks. End of the tutorial series. I know it's been years in the making, and there's been many, many delays, but it's finally done. Thanks for your patience and support. If you guys have any further questions or requests, post it down here and... If it's relevant, I'll reply. For now, this is I'm Biggie, and I'll be back. See you guys later.